Organization for Responsible Governance Executive Director Matt Aubrey weighing in on the recent bills passed in the House of Assembly this week, where the governing side believes they've made the bill more workable, while the opposing side believes the government removed the original legislation's teeth. Well, to that, Aubrey says while the new legislation did reflect opportunities for best practices in terms of transparency and accountability, there are some areas that could use some strengthening. The independence of the Fiscal Responsibility uh, Council, which has been noted by uh, best practices as the second most important component of these types of legislations, in the new bill and now act, it looks like that would actually be less independent. Um, the selection of the council was, was in the past act done by the Speaker of the House, and now it's in the hands of the minister. Um, there was a prescriptive description of who was supposed to be on that council, member, members of BICA and the Chamber and the CFA and University of the Bahamas, which are well-established institutions, and the fact that they had listing in statute also made it very valuable in, per, in, per, in terms of the public's trust of who's going to be on those. Now that's at the discretion of the minister with, with no allocation of which groups should be brought forward. He adds that those things don't necessarily reflect best practices practices for accountability. The references to penalties and specific um, uh, instances of financial misconduct were all removed from the most recent uh, bill and now act, where uh, the fiscal responsibility now council now has a very specific instance of a fine of up to $50,000 for breach of confidentiality. So in the same bill, you're taking away one element of enforcement and adding another. Aubrey says that more time for consultation would have allowed the public to understand the rationale behind such decisions. If there are functional implications, it's important to understand that. But but building trust and compliance and respect of these pieces of legislation is going to be crucial. The opposition's point man for finance, Quasi Thompson, did criticize the government for removing the offenses section out of the original act, charging that many of the bill's changes are, quote, aggressive and do not move the country forward. It doesn't mean that that there can't be specific actions once breaches have been noted, but once it's in statute, it's very specific as to you know what types of things are going to be there. So uh, you would hope, and and the government will run its business in a way that says, well, we don't enforce and support breaches, and when we do find those types of things, we will enforce it in in each instance specifically to to meet our, you know, what we feel is satisfied. That doesn't necessarily give assurance that this bill, now act, will apply the same by all administrations. Now that the bill has passed in the lower chamber and will more than likely pass in the Senate, Aubrey advised the public to do their part to ensure the powers that be are held accountable. So in the short term, what we hope is that folks will go get a chance to understand the particulars of this bill. Um, They can go to uh, the Org Bahamas website uh, and check it out on our policy review center. Um, They can also be a little bit more involved in in making sure that their thoughts and their ideas are transmitted to the folks they would have elected so that they can understand, hey, we want to be involved in these conversations. We want to know what are the types of information that that are going to make up these types of policies so that when they're passed, we have great comfort and assurance that our perspectives have have been factored in and that we can then support and promote these types of new laws that are going forward. Leah Cooper, Eyewitness News.